candidate. Brad Anderson is also on the ballot for this position, but could not be here tonight and did not send us a statement to read on his behalf. So let's begin with our opening statements. Again, you have one and a half minutes. Mr. Stanley, you filed first. Your opening statement, please. Well, thank you for uh, everyone here attending. Um, and thank you to the uh, League of Women Voters uh, for hosting this uh, forum. My name is Larry Stanley, and uh, I grew up here in Richland. I um, received quite a bit from this great city. Um, it's a beautiful city. Um, you know, when you're young, you do not uh, realize what you have. And um, I didn't until I got, came back um, after being abroad for quite some time. So um, I wanted to give back. I, I want to give back to the city. And um, I've been um, traveling uh, for part of my life throughout Asia. Uh, I was a, a teacher, an educator. I was a, uh, a pastor for a while in uh, California, and I was also uh, uh, in uh, various other uh, areas of employment. But um, uh, currently, I'm a tasting room manager, and I get to hear people um, talk about this wonderful city. and. Um, I, I want to do something about uh, making it better to improve it. Uh, we have something great here. Um, can it be improved? Most definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Regev, your op opening statement, please. Uh, good evening. I want to thank the League for putting this forum together and also all of you for being here. Since this is my third time up on the stage, I sort of feel like you know me. So tonight I'm just going to share a quote. I met a rabbi in Windhoek while I was still in the Peace Corps. And that rabbi said something which was both such an epiphany and so much common sense at the same time that 24 years later I remember it. And he said, if you bang your head against the wall, you're going to give yourself a headache. And that's sort of how I feel about our council. I went to my first meeting two years ago when residents were asking for a statement of inclusion. And for almost a year, those pleas had been met with everything from indifference to derision. And I started to notice a pattern. People spoke out against Dupertail Bridge. Council moved forward with the bridge and forced residents to help pay for it. People spoke out against developing Columbia Point South, and the council is still pursuing this. The worst thing, though, was when citizens gathered signatures to place lifting the cannabis moratorium as a ballot initiative, and council found a way to get out of it. The point of initiatives is to enable us to take up issues if council refuses to do so. By finagling their way out of this, council has shown they care more about their power than our voices. What I'm trying to say is, whether you believe in inclusion or not, care about preserving natural spaces or not, support lifting the moratorium or not, what should matter to you is that right now we have a governing body which is fundamentally broken and routinely ignores the will of the people. This is not right. We deserve to be represented by people who listen to us. Thank you, Ms. Regev. We'll now move on to the questions for these candidates. Please remember to limit your responses to one and a half minutes. And as we have for the beginning of this evening, we will once again start with an audience question. Mr. Stanley, you have, you have the honor of going first. Studies show that arts, entertainment, and creative economy are huge economic drivers in any community. What are your thoughts about arts and culture as a priority in Richland? Well, I definitely believe it's uh, critical and important. Um, I've spent uh, part of my life uh, as a musician, and so um, uh, I really do uh, believe that the Richland should lead this area of Washington in arts and entertainment um, and, uh, and the creative economy. Um, obviously, there has to be an investment, and, uh, and you have to weigh those kinds of things within the budget, but uh, casting a big vision um, in regards to that is important, and uh, I think uh, again we should lead this uh, this area in that in the, in the arts and uh, 
um, and the creative economy. So. Thank you. Ms. Regev. So um, it's a really good question. I think there is a phenomenal creative community in Richland that tries very hard with limited means to make things happen. And there, we can do better. I know they had a meeting tonight about establishing a creative district. And you know, my partner is on the Arts Commission, full disclosure, we talked about it a little bit. And I feel like we need to be smart about how we do it. And I think that we actually have like a really good setup for a performing arts space in Kennewick. That might not be the most popular answer, but we have like area there. Um, I feel like what we can do that would be a draw is to create a gallery district. Um, we went to Beijing, I swear I'm tying it in. We went to Beijing in April and they created a whole art district there and it was nothing but gallery spaces and it's become one of the main tourist attractions for the city. And we have such an amazing space between the parkway and the uptown and also the Allied Arts Gallery down off of Lee Street that we have that structure. That's what we have to offer as far as the Tri-Cities. So let's build that up and also work with Kennewick and Pasco because let's share our resources. We don't have to compete and reinvent the wheel every single time, but I feel like where we have the opportunity to shine is, is really create like good gallery spaces. Thank you, and we'll just ping pong back and forth between you two. Ms. Regev, you get to go first on this one. Are there any areas that you would like to improve the working relationship the city has with the Port of Benton, the county, or other local cities? Well, I mean, I, I think that that art question actually sort of dovetailed right to that. There is a mentality between the three cities. It's kind of like what's mine is mine. And there's a reluctance to share resources. And I think that's something where all, all of the governing agencies can improve. So what I would like to see happen is um, we actually, Pascal led the charge on that to, to get out of the regional public facilities district, you know, as far as getting the pool going. So if we foster an attitude of let's work together and, and grow our whole region and not just focus on, on I have this, I have this, you don't, then we're gonna be able to, to do a lot better with what we have. Thank you. Mr. Stanley. Would you please repeat the question? Certainly. Are there any areas that you would like to improve the working relationship the city has with the Port of Benton, the county, or other local cities? Well, to uh, dovetail uh, what uh, uh, Sher was talking about, uh, um, there is uh, always the silo mentality um, within uh, communities and cities, and we should strive to to uh, cooperate and uh, and uh, work with the other cities to uh, and the port, and uh, especially in regards to economic development in those areas that the port has jurisdiction over. So. Um, any, any way we can cooperate is, is going to uh, be beneficial to both parties. Thank you. We'll take another audience question. They write, climate change is a real threat. What role do cities play in helping citizens contribute to halting the heating of the planet? Well, as, as far as the city is concerned, we can only control what we output here in this local area. We can't control what another nation does, what the rest of the country does. Um, so we're responsible for, for what we um, uh, output. Um, so in whatever ways we can diminish that um, would be great. The other thing is carbon sinking, uh, planting more trees, um, there's, there's a number of different methods to, to, uh, to help um, and be more responsible as a, as a community. Um, so I would, uh, I would say we should explore as many of those opportunities as possible because some of those can actually give us an edge economically in the future. 
Thank you. Ms. Regev. So local government has the most impact on your day-to-day -day living. And I feel like this is something where the city has an opportunity to take charge and, and take meaningful, concrete steps. And the first thing that comes to my mind is all of the traffic. Richland's not the most walkable city in the world, and it's something that we need to fix because it is a quality of life issue as far as being to remain in your home as long as possible. But I mean, I remember last summer they were talking about ozone days on the news, and I don't remember any of that growing up. And a lot of that is also driven by the traffic. You know, they did a transportation plan back in 2004 for the city. They actually wanted George Washington Way to be like a one lane pedestrian friendly zone. And last summer, I went to an open house at the Ben Franklin Transit headquarters, and I talked to a city planner. I said, are you going to do HOV lanes? What about bike lanes? And for HOV lanes and bus plots, like, well, we don't need that. And it's so much easier to get ahead of it instead of waiting until it's too late. So we have an opportunity to improve the flow of the city, to make it a city where people want to bike, where people want to walk. And then I know I'm running out of time. I want to give a shout out to uh, my friend Ginger because she's been talking about this idea and I like to give credit where it's due. We've got so much real estate on the rooftops where we could be putting solar panels to generate more energy for the city. You know, simple, concrete steps. They're not didactic, they're not preachy, but they do have an impact on our environment. Thank you, Ms. Regev. And you have the first up on our final question, which once again, you will be limited to one minute. If you were out of town and met someone who was planning to move to the Tri-Cities, what would you tell them that would make them think that Richland has the most to offer? So for me, and that kind of dovetails to, to the last question from the first group of candidates, it's the riverfront, it's the parks. I moved here because of the parks. I was living out by Benton City. I was driving 20 minutes each way to go jogging in the park and I was like, this is ridiculous. Why don't I just move to Richland? I think that there's so much potential here between our riverfront and between this hopefully this creative district that's gonna happen, and if we can infuse new life into Uptown and into Park, we have something so special. And so I think that's what I would say is, we just come, come down to the park, walk along the river, and you'll be sold. Thank you. And thank you both for being here tonight, vying for a spot on the Richland City Council position two, but we'll get to that after Mr. Stanley answers. Just a reminder what they're running for. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> not to be shut down, of course, but uh, the, uh, the parks, um, the riverfront, amazing. Schools, incredible. I, I'm a product of the schools. Um, also, uh, there's a lot of uh, innovation happening at the small business level here, there's so much potential in this community and, um, and, and in the community life itself. Um, it's all very special and uh, I would definitely uh, promote uh, Richland to anybody I meet. Larry, thank you so much. I wouldn't have forgotten about you. <laughs> Again, Larry Stanley and Shira Gev, both running for Richland City Council position two.